eight passengers or Ruby, Frankie, or Jody Hildman related. Now, as we both know, both of these women did plead guilty to aggravated child abuse. And to count six aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. With my deepest regret and sorrow for my family and my children, guilty. And to count three aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. Guilty. So a lot of people have been yeah. watching that, but of course All you were the actually there in that courtroom hearing Jody Hildebrandt make that plea yes. and uh, covering it throughout the beginning part of this week. I, I know one thing that you've been diving into today I think is going to be a big interest to anyone that finds this story interesting, which is just how long are they going to be in prison? It, it really is not set in stone, but I mean, we both know both of these women are going to be serving prison time, but the big question, as you just mentioned, Jake, seriously, exactly how long is it going to be? A lot of people wondering what they're going to serve. Mostly it does depend on the Board of Pardons and Parole. They have the final say. But the Utah Sentencing Commission does have a mathematical system in place. They look at someone's previous criminal history. They determine the baseline amount, the minimum amount of time that somebody will have to serve. And one second-degree felony on its own is at least 18 months uh, but here's the thing, that's just for one term. Right, After there's that, four counts. there's four counts that they've decided to serve consent consecutively, and each of those following ones, 40% of each prison term has to be served. So each woman, they pleaded, uh, they took a guilty plea to uh, four second degree felony counts in this case. So the minimum, you add it all, to, all up together, it adds up to three years and four months at the very minimum. Now, to, uh, we have to reiterate, that is the minimum amount yeah. that they could face. That no includes, less than that yeah. could be much more. And, yeah. And it could be a lot more. We spoke with a criminal defense attorney, Jeremy Diaz. He says the maximum sentence could be 30 years, but he really doesn't think that they're going to serve that long. The facts associated with this case are so egregious. I think it, in a lot of people's minds, it obviously merits prison time. Um, generally speaking, for something like this, a second degree felony child abuse case, um, I don't think that you're always looking at this amount of time. Now, so the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole, as we mentioned, they look at a few different things before they actually determine if somebody's going to be released from prison. Uh, for example, they look at whether or not uh, they can control their behavior, um, uh, either in supervision or, you know, just out on their own. They also have to make sure that they have, uh, they follow through all the training programs. They have to make sure that they have a plan to re-enter society. And so there's a lot of different factors. They never just trust their gut and think, okay, I think this person's ready to, to be released. So, and not just that but the question is what about the kids are they ever going to see their their mom again they don't have to and it's going to be really up to them if they decide they want to have communication with her a lot there is very interesting now you mentioned the minimum three years four yeah. months the maximum about 30, 30 years. years i mean that's yeah. almost 10 times i guess yeah. more like a nine times difference but still that's a big spread it's a very wide open you mentioned the kids and that might be something that plays into it of course there's going to be a sentencing hearing for both of them uh, people can speak at the sentencing hearing. I'll be very curious to see if family members, if maybe any of the children speak at the hearing. They may not. That very, they may, may, may very well not. But right. who knows if they do, how that could affect potential sentencing. And that was the other thing, too, that the uh, Board of Pardons and Parole told us, is that uh, the kids will be invited to give their input any way that they want. They will not be required, though, to mm -hmm. testify or even add any input at all. So they just really don't want to re-victimize those kids again. Yeah, I think especially those who are minors right now, yes. the victims of this specific case, I, I imagine there's a good chance that maybe no one would want that yeah, to no, have to go through that process. Nobody wanted them to testify, so it wouldn't surprise me if they don't want them to speak at the sentencing either. All right, well, so, we'll yeah. see what happens. I mean, we're still... It was still a month like, and a half out from yeah, that, but uh, there'll be some run-up as we look deeper into.